Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a British horror film, The Descent. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie starts with three girls on a boat pushing their paddles down on the water as the boat glides through the water and bumping at huge rocks at every turn. Enjoying the thrill of their activity, they look up and wave happily to a man and a little girl on a big rock. As they finish their boat ride, the short-haired brunette playfully pushes the adventurous girl off the boat and laughs. The blonde girl goes up to the big rock and kisses her husband and daughter. The husband helps the adventurous girl out of the freezing water and helps to warm her up. When they pack up their things, the short-haired brunette notices the adventurous girl staring at the family as they laugh and play around. The short-haired brunette tells the family that she'll stay with their friend to help pack their other things together. Meanwhile, the blonde girl points out that her husband is distant on their drive home. He denies this and focuses on his driving. Still, she insists on asking, causing the husband to lose focus and hit a vehicle carrying metal poles, killing the husband and daughter instantly. A few hours after the accident, the blonde girl wakes up in the hospital. She quickly recalls the earlier incident, removes the wires and tubes attached to her, and runs out of the room. Outside, the hallways are empty except for the blonde girl in her hospital gown. The lights at the end of the hallway close, followed by the other lights. In a panic, she runs away, afraid of being swallowed by the darkness. While running, she bumps into her short-haired brunette friend and sees doctors and nurses are walking around. A short-haired brunette informs her that her family had perished in the accident. The blonde girl slumps to the ground and cries as her friend holds her. A year later, the short-haired brunette and the blonde girl are in a car, driving in the middle of the forest. The blonde girl stares blankly in the window as the short-haired brunette talks about their trip and reassures her that they don't have to go if she doesn't want to. A few minutes later, they arrive at their campsite and the adventurous girl greets them. The adventurous girl and the short-haired brunette stay back to carry the luggage out of the car as the blonde-haired girl enters the small cabin. Before the blonde-haired girl enters the cabin, she hears girls playfully arguing inside. And when she enters, a tall girl immediately hugs her, followed by a petite girl. A pixie-haired girl comes out and greets the newcomers. She sits down and praises the blonde girl, the short-haired brunette, and the adventurous girl on their past trips. Later that night, the pixie-haired girl and the petite girl are smoking at the cabin's patio, talking about how underwhelming and how the cave they're going to visit. Unbeknownst to the pair, the adventurous girl hears the conversation and reassures the pixie-haired girl that it will be the perfect trip. All the girls are drinking the night before their big trip in their pajamas inside the cabin. The short-haired brunette comes out of a room, wearing matching pajamas that the other girls make fun of. That same night, the blonde girl is lying in bed, unable to sleep. She sits up and takes some medicine. She looks around the room and walks towards the window, and a metal pole crashes in, stabbing her in the eye. She wakes up and realizes that it was just a nightmare. The adventurous girl is jogging through the woods at sunrise, and when she arrives at their place, she wakes the other girls. A few minutes later, all the girls are ready to go. They take a group photo before leaving the cabin to commemorate the trip. Immediately after they took the picture, the group split into two different vehicles, the blonde girl driving fast in the blue vehicle. In the second vehicle, the tall girl, petite girl, and pixie-haired girl make fun of a silly yellow watch while talking about the cave they're about to visit and explore. After a few periods of driving, they arrive at their destination. They grab their bags from the trunks of their cars. With the adventurous girl's lead, the group hike through the forest towards their destination. They give a quick run-through of the rules they need to follow to pass the time. In the middle of their hike, they come across a dead deer with a murder of crows pecking at it. The pixie-haired girl decides to take multiple photos as the other girls walk past it as quickly as possible. Some hours later, they reach the cave. The girls put on their harnesses while the adventurous girl rappels down the mouth of the cave. When she lands, she looks around in all of the beauty of the cave's surroundings. She calls for the other girls, and one by one, the girls all come rappling down to meet her. Once all the girls are safely inside the cave, they roam around exploring. The pixie-haired girl is holding a video camera documenting their journey. The blonde girl is running her hands through the surface of the rocks and notices what seems to be bloody fingerprints on one of the stones. She puts her hand on top of it and sees that it fits the shape of human fingers. She walks back to the group, and a colony of bats comes out from the cave's walls, startling her. After a few laughs, the adventurous girl leads the girls down a small hole. As they get deeper into the cave, the pixie-haired girl is in the lead, and the adventurous girl stops her, because she'll fall off if she takes one more step. The adventurous girl lights up a flare, and everyone sees that they are on the higher part of a rock. 
She continues to light flares and throws them at random places inside the cave to see where they're heading. Due to exhaustion, they stop for a while to eat. The adventurous girl offers the blonde girl an apple, but she says she's not hungry. The adventurous girl then apologizes to the blonde girl for not staying a little longer after the accident. The blonde girl stands up and finds their next passage and comments how the cave seems different from what she read in the book. The pixie-haired girl goes in and squeezes herself into the entrance, while the others stay back until she puts a few distances. When the other girls have gone through the opening, it's now the blonde girl's turn. She grabs her bag and crawls through the small space, but she gets stuck not long after entering. A short-haired brunette crawls back in to guide her. But the rocks on top of them start to shake and quickly drives the blonde girl out safely, but she accidentally leaves the bag. After the incident, the blonde girl is unconscious on the floor and dreaming of a birthday cake. The other girls wake her up. The cave fills with dust. They all check on each other and wait until the dust settles down. Once the dust slowly dissipates, the group suggests that the cave is three ways out based on the guidebook. They all turn to the adventurous girl and ask her to check the guidebook but she confesses that she left the book and went to a different cave, a new system. Tension builds among the group as they realize that rescue is impossible. They find a different opening and decide to push forward with the tall girl in the lead. But as she is nearing the exit, the adventurous girl stops her and lights a flare, and they see that they are standing on a cliff and falling off will be fatal. The group devises a plan on how they're going to get across the cliff. The tall girl volunteers to create a line of rope where they can all glide using their harnesses to get to the other side. The tall girl puts the metal clamps on the cave's ceiling to attach the rope. She slows down halfway due to her muscles straining. The other girls urge her to go on. Once she has successfully installed the makeshift zipline, the girls glide through it one by one. When they are about to push forward to look for other ways out of the cave, the adventurous girl goes back and collects the metal clamps and rope they used, since they can't waste their resources and they already lost one of their packs in the rubble. Meanwhile, they explore on the other side of the cliff. The short-haired brunette notices some caveman painting that shows two possible exits, which gives them hope that they may find a way out. But as the girls walk deeper into the cave, someone is watching them from afar. A few minutes later, they hit what seems to be a dead end. The adventurous girl asks the pixie-haired girl for her lighter and uses it to look for any sign of breeze to check for possible passages. The pixie-haired girl dives right in and rushes towards the tunnel when she finds one. A scream stops the adventurous girl in her tracks, and sees that the pixie-haired girl has fallen into a hole and was only gripping the edge with her fingers. The adventurous girl struggles to hold on, and the pixie-haired girl falls. Inside the hole, the pixie-haired girl wakes up and feels excruciating pain in her leg, and when she inspects it, she notices that a bone is sticking out of her leg. She screams for help, and the other girls go down to help her, push the bone back inside her leg and make her a splint. While the other girls are busy, the blonde girl points her flashlight at the end of the cave and sees a man-like creature that moves fast. Frantic, she tells the others what she saw, but the adventurous girl reassures her that there's nothing there and focuses on getting out of the cave. After fixing up the pixie-haired girl's leg, the girls help support the pixie-haired girl as they walk inside the tunnel. They climb up a wall. The blonde girl asks for the camera to try and look around, using the camera's night vision, and she sees that all around them are piles of bones. She pans the camera towards the short-haired brunette. She sees a pale, white creature with bat-like features behind her. They all panic and agree that it's not human. After a few moments of panic, the blonde girl rushes and leads the group to a tunnel, but a pale creature is suddenly in front of them as they take a turn. In the middle of the hysteria, the pixie-haired girl loses her balance and falls to the ground. A pale creature wrestles her and rips her neck, killing her instantly. The adventurous girl rushes towards the pixie-haired girl's body, and a pale creature attacks her. She grabs one of the tools on her belt and stabs the pale creature, but a second one jumps on her back. They continue to fight until she grabs hold of a spiked metal rod and kills the pale creature. The short-haired brunette walks over to the adventurous girl. She accidentally stabs the short-haired brunette on her neck. The short-haired brunette asks the adventurous girl to stay, but she slowly backs away and goes into a tunnel. Now separated, the blonde girl uses the camera's night vision to go around the tunnel and comes across the place where the pale creatures store their killings to eat. She hides behind a rock as she watches them devour a body through the camera. In a separate tunnel, the tall girl, together with the petite girl, holds a light that casts a green glow. They hear the sounds of a pale creature moving, and they quickly hide between the rocks lying beside each other. Alone, the adventurous girl continues to use the lighter to try and locate other possible passages. She notices a drawing of an arrow, which makes her think that someone has already been inside the tunnel to try and map it. 
While this was happening, the tall girl and petite girl found themselves with a pale creature in the tunnel. They keep quiet, notice that the creature is blind, and rely on their hearing. The petite girl's watch starts beeping, and she hurriedly takes it off and throws it away to avoid detection. Moments later, a pale creature attacks them both again. The tall girl puts up a fight. When the pale creature is about to bite into her neck, it suddenly goes slack, and the adventurous girl is standing before her with a bloody metal rod. After the fight, the petite girl informs the adventurous girl that the pale creatures are blind, and only use their hearing for hunting, like a bat. Still, inside the tunnel where the pale creatures keep their food, she hears someone choking and finds the short-haired brunette. So she warns the blonde girl not to trust the adventurous girl because she's the one who stabbed her. She hands her a necklace. As she inspects it, she realizes that the adventurous girl is having an affair with her husband. A short-haired brunette asks the blonde girl to end her suffering. Hesitant, the blonde girl smashes a huge rock on the brunette's head. Because of the noise, a pale creature attacks her, but she can kill it instantly. A second pale creature arrives and chases her not long after the kill. She runs and accidentally falls in a pool of blood and carcass. The pale creature jumps on her, but she grabs a sharp rock and stabs the pale creature in the eye. She swims away from the pool, holding a torch when a pale creature comes and she stays still to avoid discovery. In the different parts of the cave, the three other girls, the tall, petite, and adventurous, now find themselves in a swarm of pale creatures on the cliff they were on earlier. The petite girl tries to cross using her rope and harness, but a pale creature catches her and slashes her neck open. A pale creature suddenly grabs the tall girl's foot and causes her to fall. The pale creature immediately starts guzzling down on her stomach. The adventurous girl jumps off the cliff, falls into the water, and finds a pale creature with her. She quickly stabs it and climbs back up the cliff, where she runs into the blonde girl. Together, they find a way out of the cave, but find a tunnel full of pale creatures. Both fight and kill the pale creatures. Later, the blonde girl shows the adventurous girl the necklace. Filled with anger, the blonde girl stabs the adventurous girl's leg and leaves her to the approaching pale creatures to die. Running away from the tunnel, the blonde girl slips and accidentally falls through a hole before being knocked unconscious. A bright light glows from an opening, and she climbs towards it and finds the cave's exit. She runs towards their vehicle and drives away fast. Soon after, she stops on the side of the road to vomit, and when she sits back down inside the vehicle, she sees a bloody adventurous girl beside her and screams. She wakes up and realizes she's still inside the cave and sees a birthday cake in front of her and a phantom of her daughter. We see here that the blonde girl is alone with a torch burning in front of her. Their journey ends by turning a descent into madness. Eventually, when hallucinating the birthday cake lights, she accepts her fate and considers this a reunion with her daughter. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.